Bill. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank all of you for taking the time this evening to come and hear our position on the important issues facing our community in this coming election. One of the obvious questions for most of the candidates is, here is, why did you decide to run for city council? For me, the obvious question is, why did you decide to run for city council again? And I really had no intentions of running for another term. In fact, I was halfway on my way to retirement until several issues uh, surfaced this past year that made me reconsider that decision. First was a decision of the majority of the council to bring marijuana facilities, grow houses, and retail sales to our city. We simply do not have the resources to properly enforce and regulate these facilities. Without that, Montebello faces serious potential negative problems for our community, our residents, and most importantly, for our children. The second issue is Montebello's critical financial situation, which is highlighted by the fact that the state of California is doing a full high-risk financial audit of our city, which is done very rarely. The the decision or reason for this is not because we have an income problem, we have an irresponsible spending problem, and that uh, needs to be addressed. And I feel that that's one of the other main issues. Therefore, I decided to run again because of that. Now, the uh, obvious question also would be, while you've been a member of the city council the last five years, why didn't you do something about these issues? Well, I have been on the minority of a four to one and a three to two council, and you're in that position as little you can do to affect the outcome. You can bring the issues to light, you can pass your dissenting vote, but you can't change the outcome. But I think it's important to bring those to light because it makes the community aware of what's going on. This is one of the main reasons why I decided to run again, but we must elect experienced leaders who understand the issue and have the knowledge properly of uh, resolve those issues that are affecting our community. But those are the uh, main reasons why I decided to run last, one last term for city council. Thank you. If you'd like, the question is, the city of Montebello has been facing a large fiscal deficit. What steps would you take to reduce that deficit? Yes, as I said earlier, Montebello doesn't have a revenue problem. We have a spending problem, irresponsible spending. We pay far more, far more taxes in Montebello than any city our size in this area. If we get back to sound business practices, every bid should go out for competitive bidding. There shouldn't be single bid contracts where certain favored individuals are given a contract without competitive business. This is the, the, the core of the problem. And by getting back to doing what we've done in the past and what we should be doing now and what is required in some cases by law, then this, this revenue problem would be easily resolved. And that those funds could be used to increase our police and fire and other city services. But as long as we consider this pattern of spending that does not make sense and that is uh, totally uh, unacceptable, we are not going to see the situation resolved. Uh, question number two. What would you do to improve the appearance of the city and how would you go about enacting your plans? Bill. You know, just like we take pride in our own homes, we should take pride in our city. One of the key elements of that is totally important. We have the ordinances on the books, but one thing I am very troubled by, I went by city-owned property the other day, the weeds are higher than the fence. If we don't set the example of the city, and how do we expect other folks to do so? Also, there's many businesses with absentee owners who don't feel like they should take care of their business because they live elsewhere. Then when we'll San Marino was on my case, I was after the weeds and debris on his business. I don't live here, so why is that? I'm too busy making money. Well, that's, I told him, that's my front yard. So really, what we have to do as a community is demand that we do a better job of looking at the areas that are unsightly and are in many cases are major thoroughfares that are windows to our community and start with those and make sure that some of the major property owners who are be allowed not to appear to propose it around the books are required to do so just like we require residents when they uh, go after them for unsightly homes. So it's not rocket science, it's just a simple uh, case of doing uh, the proper thing. Thank you, Bill. For round robin. Question number three. Uh, and this is a good one. We've already touched, some of you have already touched on this. What is your position on the current ordinance on cannabis? If elected, will you change it? And if so, how? Thank you. Yeah. First place, let's call it what it is. It's not cannabis. Cannabis is a fancy word for marijuana. They try to make it sound a little more uh, uh, acceptable. If I had three votes of the city council, this would be gone in a heartbeat. There is no benefit to the city of Montebello bringing this into our community. We simply don't have the resources to properly enforce and regulate it. More importantly is our youth. 
Over two million youngsters are using marijuana in these e-cigarettes. And now the major bottling companies, including Coca-Cola, are going to start infusing marijuana in soft drinks. Tell me who's that target of that. And this is totally unacceptable. There should not be uh, exploiting our children to make money. And even if there was funds left over from enforcement, which is very unlikely, uh, we shouldn't be running our city on drug money. It is simply not the most effect effective way and it's going to deteriorate the appearance of the image of our community and going to uh, create uh, other problems. Medical, uh, for medical situations where marijuana folk feel it helps them, that is certainly acceptable and should be permitted, but that's not the issue here. All right, question number four. If elected, you will be part of a five-member council. How will you work with your fellow council members to accomplish your goals? You know, when I was first elected, I thought you ride in on your white horse and uh, take the city and get everything you want. You find, quickly find out in the political process that doesn't work. Consensus building is important, but more importantly than that is civility and a respect for the opinions of other individuals rather than the situation we have in our community today where if I raise an issue, I don't get a response from a colleague, I get a personal attack. That destroys the essence of the, of the democratic process because unless you have an environment where open dialogue and exchange of ideas can take place, we are not going to be able to address the important issues for our community. But more so is to be well informed on the issue and understand what the potential impacts are. Sometimes we think things will be great and then we find out uh, not so great at the end of it. So uh, an informed council, an informed community, and working together with the community is the most effective way of getting uh, the proper things done that will benefit our community. Thank you. So Bill, the first question from the audience is, businesses are building more and more apartment complexes in Montana, and it's impacting parking. How does the city council plan on resolving the parking issue? Well, in the first place, they're not apartments, they're condominiums, which creates home ownership, which has folks that have a stake in the community, and this is beneficial because they are not unlike renters if they don't like the situation, they can put a 30 day notes and they're going somewhere else. The parking situation, I've said over and over again, simply because we're allowing overbuilding on these sites and allowing the fire park to be uh, done on the streets. We have to review our condominium ordinances and, and make it more reasonable under the, the circumstances in our city. Because of the uh, overcrowded situation with so many cars already in our residential neighborhoods. So it's not a difficult task to do, it's simply a matter of updating our uh, condominium and codes that we haven't done for probably 20 years and make it more uh, effective for what the circumstances are today because so many people uh, have, used to be back in the day it was a family car, now you have uh, youngsters living at home three or four cars in each family provide two parking places for each unit. So we have to address that and uh, find a uh, reasonable solution for that. Thank you, Bill. Montebello, like surrounding communities, has a housing shortage. What, if anything, would you propose to address this issue? And it also says parking issues, which I guess would go along with that as we're talking about. Thank you, sir. Would you like to hear the question again? Yes, thank you. No, I am quite you familiar with the okay. question and the issue. Unfortunately, this is far too complex an issue to try to address in one minute. Uh, there's a lot of aspects of it that need to be considered. But because of the cost of housing in Southern California, uh, many people are forced to rent. And landlords are raising rents at such a uh, fast rate that is uh, causing people to have to spend 50 or 60 percent of their income uh, just for a, to keep a roof over their head and keep very little for the other basic necessities. This is totally unacceptable. The major H that we passed at the last uh, election in November has started to have some very positive impacts, but one of the main things they're looking at is making government, industrial, commercial, uh, some of the school properties that can be, afforded, uh, can be converted to affordable housing, and I think that's at least one area to be started in, but like I said, there's so many other aspects of it, I just don't have the time to uh, address those in a short period of time that we have to address this question. Okay, thank you, Bill. And Southworth starts it. Uh, do you believe you can keep the city's fire and police departments under local control? This local control of police and fire is very important. We have a lot higher level of service and faster response time than any of the cities around us that have county services. We have an outstanding group of young men and women that are in our police and fire department that 
we're required to keep our community safe. I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. We don't have a revenue problem, we have an irresponsible spending problem. In the past two years, over $50 million in one bid, the single bid contracts have been out. We're simply not getting the best value for our dollars. We could have even saved 10 or 15% of that money. It would have been millions of dollars going into the general fund, not only to cover our deficit, but also to properly fund and continue to improve our police and fire department because the safety of our families and the safety of our community is the number one priority as far as I'm concerned. All right, now we move on to the candidate's closing statements. This is one minute. We'll start with you, Art. I think you've heard my position on many of the issues, and let me say it as plainly as I can with the number of coffee hours on, to the individual residents. If you reelect me and give me three votes on the city council, I guarantee you we'll have the city back on sound financial footing within a year. It's not rocket science. Get rid of the good old boy system and get back to sound business practices. Yeah. That is the, uh, the whole key to it. We'll have revenue to maintain our own police and fire department as well as begin to meet the other needs of our community. I want to thank the Chamber for hosting this this evening and for all of you to take time out to hear our positions on the issue. And I would urge you to carefully consider what you've heard this evening, here this evening as you uh, consider casting your ballot uh, on November the 6th. With that, I Again, thank you for your kind attention, and uh, God bless and enjoy the rest of the evening. Yeah.